All right, so our last section for this unit, again, we're still talking about things that are in the plane. Uh, we're going to talk about these things called polygons, and we're going to have a little bit of fun, a uh, little bit of fun with them, or at least I'm going to have a little bit of fun, and hopefully you will too. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let you know what a polygon is, because we're going to be seeing a whole bunch of them. So a polygon is a closed figure. This word is significant. I'll tell you what it means to be a closed figure versus an open figure. It's a closed figure in a plane determined by three or more line seg segments. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw a few examples. You can choose to draw them or not draw them. So for instance, this right here, we know uh, it has three sides. There we go, three line segments. Anything that you can join together with any number of line segments makes a polygon. So here's something with five sides. Looks like mountains. Uh, here's something. Looks like steps. Okay, you can draw pretty much anything. What it means to be closed is this last thing that I'm about to draw is not a polygon. So if I have four, if I have four line segments like this, but notice they don't come and close. Okay, that's an open figure. So this would this would be what's called an open figure, but it's not it's not a polygon. Okay, so we're not going to worry about things like that. We want to be able to mark off this region. When we come back next week after our test, we're going to talk a little bit more about polygons and talk about this interior region uh, and and what that means and how we can measure it. But for now, we're just talking basically about edges and angles in this section. If the sides of a polygon are equal, okay, so if we know that all the sides are equal, the figure is called a regular polygon. So that word regular, and we'll use that as part of some problems today, so you're going to see it again. That word regular is significant. It is giving you some good information. So, and, and also I want to mention if all the sides of a polygon are equal, it also stands to reason that all the angles are also equal. That's a little bit of, of trivia. Now, I'm not going to make you in this class memorize the names of different polygons, but I put a little table there that gives you some of the names of some of the more popular polygons. My favorite one to say is the 12 sides the dodecagon, uh, it's fun to say, and spell, uh, but those are just some, some things. On the test, I will give you the number of sides of, of a polygon. So it's, uh, there's, I know that you have a lot of words that you're, you're trying to remember here that we filled in some blanks and I'm not trying to overload you uh, with anything. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about with respect to our polygons is the angles on the inside. So a bit of trivia, I don't know if you've encountered this in a geometry class or an algebra class before, but we can know the sum of the angles of a triangle. Does anyone know uh, what, what the, the sum of the interior angles of a triangle add up to? Yeah. So if you didn't know that, here it is. The sum of the interior angles is 180 degrees for any triangle. So then the question uh, stands to reason. I just, I'm interested by stuff like this. And when I'm able to, I like to tell you why things are instead of just making you memorize things. So the question stands to reason, how do we know? I mean, can we show this? Okay, so I'm just gonna do a brief sketch. I'm not gonna make you reproduce this. I'm just giving this to you so you can understand that uh, how we know a triangle has 180 degrees. So here we have a pair of parallel lines like we had at the end of the last section. And so notice at the top, I've got an A with an apostrophe, a B with an apostrophe, C with an apostrophe. If I was to add up, just from looking at the picture, if I was to add up those three angles, what do those three angles add up to? They add up to 180, right? Because they make a line. So A prime plus B prime plus C prime equals 180 degrees. And the reason is it's because they make a line. Now we're gonna use some of those relationships that we just talked about a little while ago to now say, how do those three angles, A prime, B prime, and C prime, or A apostrophe, B apostrophe, C apostrophe, how do they relate to the, the inside of the triangle? Well, first one, what's the relationship between B and B with the apostrophe? They're vertical, so those are equal angles, right? We just, that was the very end of the last section. So B apostrophe is equal to B, and the reason is because they're vertical angles.
Okay, now I know we have two transversals cutting through those parallel lines. We got two transversals making, uh, uh, making that triangle, but looking, looking at A and A with the apostrophe, what kind of angles do those look like? I mean, they're equal. I'm gonna tell you that up front. but which of the relationships that we saw at the end of the last section are A and A with the apostrophe? They're corresponding. Right, they're both in the same position. They're on the they're they're on the left side, left and above. So the a a with the apostrophes on the left and above the parallel line, and a is on the the left and above the parallel line. So a apostrophe equals a because they are corresponding. Well, one more. How about c and c with the apostrophe? Those are equal. Why are those equal? What are they? Again, they're corresponding. Yeah, they're the same thing. So C prime equals C because they're corresponding. And so I've just got one more statement that I'm going to write down, but this is just, a, this is the, the kind of the skeleton of what we would say is a proof. I know that that's a scary word, okay, but this is the demonstration of, of why the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees, okay? So now, originally, we said A with the apostrophe and B with the apostrophe and C with the apostrophe add up to 180. We've just shown that B with the apostrophe is the same thing as B. We've just shown that A with the apostrophe is the same thing as A. We've just shown that C with the apostrophe is the same thing as C. So those angles in the triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. And there you go. So you got more than you bargained for today. You're getting your money's worth. We just proved that that relationship is true. So we can take it to the bank. So what we're going to do at the, the start of the next page, when we get there, we're not quite there yet, but then we're going to say, okay, well, that's cool for triangles, 180 degrees. Is there something like that that we could say for, uh, for other figures? Okay, and so we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But before then, I want to go through uh, an example and an exercise right here. I love these problems. I put, I put a couple of these problems on the test that you're going to take. So I'll put a little asterisk by this as you're reviewing for the test. Uh, these two right here. So I'm going to do example one with you. Example one says now using all that we know between relationships of angles of parallel lines and triangles and vertical angles, all of that, I want to use this picture and I want to figure out what the value of X is down here. So notice I've got these three lines. They, they, they intersect each other. We've got this triangle in the middle that forms the relationship between everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this brand new little, uh, little bit of trivia that the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees to figure out what X is. So firstly, is there any angle of the triangle? Let's just call them the left, the right, and the bottom, just because I didn't number them or anything. Uh, can, can I figure out the left, right, or bottom angle of the triangle at all? Okay, this is a great observation. Do I have any parallel lines on this one? No, so none of the, so alternating interior, alternating exterior, and the corresponding are not going to apply to this problem because there's no parallel lines. Okay, good thought. Uh, what we're, we will use, we will use, so what I want to do is I want to figure out what the three angles of the triangle are, which I can do so that I can then figure out X. Yeah, what do you got for me? So this right angle right here is 37, you're saying because it's vertical with that one. Okay, everybody tracking with me on that? Okay, perfect. Okay, in specific, how can I figure out the left one, the top left angle of the triangle? Yeah, because they form a straight line, right? They're supplementary or supplementary. I can never pronounce that word, word right, and I don't know why, so hope you can forgive me. Uh, you can ask for your money back from Polk State. So I'm going to take 180 minus the 132, and that I believe if I'm doing, I can't talk and subtract, but I think that's 48 degrees. Okay, now here is where that bit of trivia we just talked about a moment ago will come into effect. Uh, the sum of the angles of the triangle uh, have to add up to 180 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 180 degrees for the triangle, and then I'm going to subtract 48, 
which is the first one. And so that leaves me with 132. Then I'm going to subtract 37 from that. And that leaves me, what, 95? Is everyone following along where I'm getting these measures from? I want this to be a very straightforward thing, but uh, I, I would not be doing a good service to you if I'm just running along having a good time here. So let me know, raise your, I can see your hand when you, when you wave them, even though I'm not wearing my glasses. Okay, so you're just all blurry blobs right now. Okay, so then we're almost done. Then what is X? 95, it's vertical with that angle we just found. So X is 95 degrees because it forms a vertical angle. Fantastic. So you get your chance. It's a very similar problem right next door. Exercise one. Go ahead and find the value of X of that one. And in fact, on that one, I've already given you one of the angles of the triangle. It's a little bit lighter work. Okay, so on this, again, we don't have parallel lines on this one, so those are, are not helping me this time, but I do have a triangle here, so that triangle forms a relationship with all the other angles on the picture. So the left angle of the triangle is already determined for me, it's 35 degrees. What's this right angle of the triangle going to be? 30, it's, it's, uh, it's vertical. Okay, great. So now again, I've got a triangle. I can figure out the top of this because the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So when you popped out your calculator, what did you get as the top angle of this? What was that? 115, okay, great. So 35 plus 30 plus 115, that adds up to 180. Is everyone tracking with me? Anybody not uh, up to speed? Let me know. We can, we can talk about this in a different way and make sure that you, you do get up to speed. Okay, and then this 115, that forms a supplement with X. So I'm going to subtract that from 180. And when I do that, the value of X is what? Yep, 65. Great. Excellent job. All right, I'm going to turn the page unless there's a question. I am ready to rumble if you need anything. So... We know that the sum of the angles of a triangle at up to 180 degrees. So what I want to know now is, can I do the same thing for other figures? So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to draw, uh, I'm going to draw an example of something with four, five, and six sides. And we're just going to see if we can figure out the pattern and come up with a general principle. So here's something with four sides. I'm just going to happen to draw a rectangle because I am not a great artist. Uh, you would know that if you, if you knew me better. So that's something uh, that... This is gonna represent any figure with four sides for the demonstration. Then I'm gonna draw something with five sides. It's a pentagon. So it's gonna look something like this. It might, might actually, well, good. I didn't draw the sides equal. Oh, that's actually four sides. Good job, Perkster. And this is all on video and everything. You're doing great. Let's try again. One, two, three, four. That's better, five sides. Woo. I'm gonna do something with six sides as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we will see, can we determine the pattern of what's going on and uh, so that we can extrapolate and fill in that blank that's right below. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do with the four sided figure what I'm going to do with each of these figures is I'm going to pick a vertex and I'm going to draw I'm going to draw diagonals to any uh, vert vertices opposite so for instance I'm just going to start with this lower one and I'm just going to draw a diagonal whoop, just like that. The reason I've done that is now I've divided that four sided figure into how many triangles okay now there's two triangles. And we know from the previous page that each of these two triangles, the sum of the angles is 180 degrees. So now I have two times 180 degrees. And so in a four sided figure, I have 360 degrees if I was to add up all the sides, or excuse me, add up all the angles. You with me? Do you see how I got that? I'm just using the, the principle that we talked about on the last page that we demonstrated to be true that a triangle has a sum of three, or excuse me, a triangle is a sum of 180 degrees. So now I've got two triangles. I've got one, I've got two. So two times 180 is what gives me the 360. So I'm going to do the same thing now with the five sided figure. I'm just going to pick this bottom vertex. And I notice I can draw all the way over to this one and I can draw all the way over to that one. So for the five-sided figure, how many triangles was I able to cut this into? Okay, yep, there's one, there's two, there's three. So I have three triangles. And each of those triangles has 180 degrees worth of angles. So that's three times 180, and that equals 540 degrees. And one more time, that way we can uh, we can kind of gain some confidence in the pattern that you probably uh, are seeing already. I'm going to do the same thing with the six sided figure. I'm going to I'm going to draw a diagonal there. I'm going to draw a diagonal there. Draw a diagonal right there. So for the six sided figure, I'm able to divide that into how many triangles? One, two, three, four. So I have four triangles. Each of those four triangles has uh, interior angles that add up to 180. So four times 180, and I'm not good at talking and multiplying. So I think that's 720. You should check that though. So can you spot the pattern? When I had four sides, I had two triangles. When I had five sides, I had three triangles. When I had six sides, I had four triangles. If I, if I said we're not going to draw, I don't think I could draw it, but if I said that we have a figure with 10 sides, how many triangles do you think I could cut that figure with 10 sides into? Yeah, notice it's two less every time, right? Four sides, two, five sides, subtract two, get three, six sides, subtract two, get four. So if I did draw the figure, I'd have eight triangles. And so that would be eight times 180. And that's, that's a lot. That's zero, that's four, carry the six. That's 1440, 1440 degrees. And so just to, just to write this down in a more general way, you've seen the pattern now. I think you could figure it out. Uh, the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a polygon with N sides. Okay, so N is the number of sides is this, you're gonna take N, then you're gonna subtract two to get the number of triangles, just like you, you did pretty confidently with the 10-sided figure. And then you're gonna take that and you're gonna multiply it by 180 degrees. So what I would like you to do, please, exercise two, I'm just gonna give you, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. I would like you to determine what the sum of the interior angles of an octagon are.
Okay, so I told you we've got an octagon. You could look on the front page. The octagon has eight sides to it. Okay. If this was the test, I would tell you how many sides. I'm not gonna make you memorize that, but you had the front page right, right here. So the, the sum of the interior angles is eight minus two. I could divide, if I drew the picture, I could divide that up into six triangles and then six times 180, what does that turn out to be? 1,000 what? Thank you. Appreciate you using your calculator for me. 1,080 degrees. Everybody get the same thing? Okay. Well, then we're going to turn that and turn this into a little bit of a, an example and use some of our other properties that we've been talking about. So the next one says this. Uh, this is my example. I'm going to work this one with you. It says, given a regular hexagon. So I told you that word regular means something. What does that mean? All the sides, all the angles are equal in a regular figure. Okay, so that's going to help us. Now, I just want to make clear that we could not do what we're about to do in example two in the previous exercise because we were not told it was regular. Okay, the best we could do in exercise two is determine what the sum of the angles are. Then they could be all different sizes, so we don't know. Okay, but for this one, since it's regular, we can be a little more specific. So first thing, we're going to find the sum of the interior angles just like we did a moment ago. In fact, we just... Uh, we, we just did this right up above. A hexagon has six sides. So the sum of the interior angles is six minus two times 180 degrees. And we saw up above that that's 720 degrees. So here is a hexagon. This is the, the best regular hexagon. Oh, that's not too shabby, right? That's better than the one I drew yesterday, which I was really happy with. Okay, so that's a nice looking regular hexagon. By the way, when you're doing your homework, if the book wants you to know that sides of something are equal, uh, what they'll do is they'll put like two little marks on each of the side. And what this tells you is that all those sides are, are equal. You can know that you don't have to, you're, you're not guessing about that. So if I'm going to find now the measure of each of the interior angles, I know that all of these angles add up to 720 degrees. I know they're all equal. What can I do to figure out the measure of one of them? Perfect. I'm going to take that 720 degrees, which is the sum of all the angles, and I'm going to divide it by six because there are six of them. And when I do that, that turns out to be 120 degrees. So each of these angles right here on the inside of my hexagon, I'm just gonna make a little arc, are 120 degrees. Well, the last part of the problem now asks you to do this. It says, find the measure of an exterior angle. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna extend this, I'm gonna extend this bottom side. I could do this with any of the sides. And now what I wanna know is, uh, I want to know what's the measure of this pink angle right here that I just made. That's the exterior angle. It's on the outside of the hexagon. Well, this is just using a relationship we've already used a bunch of times today. What do these two angles have to add up to? 180. So how, what's the measure of this exterior angle right here? Yep, 180 minus the 120 gives me 60 degrees. Perfect. So I'm going to give you 90 seconds. I want you to do the same three steps, this time with a dodecagon. And if you look back on the front page, a dodecagon has 12 sides.
All right, I'm going to get started on this. Check your work with my work. If you have any questions at all, please do not be shy. I want you all to do so amazing on this, this next test. So the A problem, what's the sum of the interior angles? Well, I have something with 12 sides. So I'm going to subtract two. That's the number of triangles I could divide it into if I, if I could draw, up, draw the picture. Then I'm going to multiply that by 180 degrees. And so 10 times 180 is 1,800 degrees. So far, are we so good. We're doing all right. So you notice I drew a do, the, my best attempt at a regular dodecagon. That's not as good as yesterday. You got the better hexagon in the previous problem. They got the better dodecagon. Sorry. Uh, I don't know if you feel cheated or not. So B says now, what's the measure of an individual interior angle? So I'm going to take that 1800 and I'm going to divide it by what? 12. 12. There are 12 angles. They're all equal in measure. And so that is 150. All right, thank you for your help. I appreciate that. So each of those is 150. And then the C part is if I take this side right here, I'm just using the bottom because it's right there at the bottom. And I want to know what's this angle right here. Then how many degrees are left over for this exterior angle right here? 30. They have to add up to 180. Great job. Yes. Yes. Yes, the number of angles and the number of sides in a polygon. Well, in let me just say this. I'm, I can't say that definitively. In the, this polygon, these regular polygons that, that I've just drawn, these are called convex polygons because all of the, like if you were standing on the inside of this, if it was a room, all of the angles point away from you. So uh, one of my examples of a polygon on the beginning, this would be called a concave polygon. Because if you were standing on the inside of this region, that, that one that's at the top, that those angles come at you. And I can't say for sure off the top of my head, uh, so I don't want to be wrong for you if that's true of a concave polygon, but for a convex polygon, that is true, that the number of sides, number of angles would be the same. Okay, great question. Love it. All right, well, I'm going to turn the page then. This is the last big page that we have. There's one, there's one more little bit of information on the last page that we'll get to. So we talked about triangles. They have 180 degrees as the sum of the interior angles. Triangles get classified by two things. Okay, triangles get classified either by angles or by sides. And so the top row here, we're going to classify our triangles by angles. And then the bottom here, we're going to classify our triangles by sides. So triangles, uh, triangles can be two things at the same time. So for instance, I'm just going to go across the top. If you have a triangle that all the angles are acute angles. So just review for the test. Last time we defined what an acute angle is. Anybody remember what, what that means? Less than 90 and bigger than zero. We're not, no negative angles right here. This is not trigonometry. So between zero and 90 degrees, yes. So all the angles are, are less than 90 degrees and bigger than zero. So when you have one of those, so mathematicians love to label things. They're not always super creative. This is called an acute triangle. Hopefully it makes sense. All the angles are acute angles. So it's acute, an acute triangle. The next one is if you have a triangle that one of the angles is obtuse, again, just reviewing for the test because these words are going to come up. Okay, I'm not going to make you fill in the blank, but I do have some things where you're going to circle the word. You're going to have some choices. Okay, so uh, if one of the angles is obtuse, what is an obtuse angle? Greater than 90 in, in between 90 and 180. Okay, so again, we're not in trigonometry. We're not going to go beyond 180. So this is called an obtuse triangle. When you, have a, when you have a right angle, and I told you the other day when we talked about complementary angles that when, when things are 90 degrees you, in the pictures, you'll tend to see like a little square here just, to, just so that you can verify that. So when you have a right angle, it's called a right triangle. Those are, those are the designations for triangles when we're basing it on the angle. When we're basing it on the sides, so if I have a triangle that has two equal sides and two equal angles, that's called, and I've left my sheet over here because I know I'm going to mess up the spelling. I'm not a great speller. Well, let's see. Let's see how, let's see how the perkster does. 
isosceles, I-S-O-S-C-E-L-E-S. That's an isosceles triangle. Okay, let's see how I did, because I had my sheet out with me last time. I did it. Look at me, I've learned something. Isosceles triangle, that's hard to spell. Again, uh, I'm not gonna make you spell it on the test, but you might have to know what it is as part of a problem. Okay, so notice my isosceles triangle, this particular isosceles triangle, that's the example. It's also acute, so you could say that that is an acute isosceles triangle. Not all isosceles triangles are acute. That's why there's the two different designations. If all three sides are equal, you have what's called an equilateral triangle. And finally, if you have a triangle that none of the sides are in any sort of relationship, none of them are equal, this is called a scalene. I don't know where that word comes from. It's a fun word. It's a scalene triangle. So for the time being, that kind of ends our triangle trivia. So the last source of problems we're going to have in this section deal with the, uh, these things that you see down at the bottom of the page. So two figures, if I have two figures with equal corresponding angles, so the angles are all the same, and proportional corresponding sides, these are called similar figures. So a similar figures like a projection, like, like this acute triangle right here. On my page, this acute triangle is about uh, a half inch tall, but up there it's like, I don't know, six or seven inches tall. So that has the same general shape. All the angles are the same, but the side lengths are different because it's been projected. They, the one on my page and the one up there are called similar figures. Okay, another example of that is found at the bottom of the page. I've got these two pentagons. They look like home plate in baseball. And I've told you up in the top that these two things are similar. And once we know that something's similar, we can use that relationship to be able to figure out any missing side. So I'm gonna show you how to do this for, for, for similar figures. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna help you figure out the length of side BC. Okay, so notice BC is on this figure. There's a little X right by it, means I don't know. What's the corresponding side on the bigger, the, the bigger figure to BC? QR, yes, and we know QR, QR is three. That's helpful. Is there a pair of sides that correspond to each other in this figure that I know both of them? Yeah, DC down here is three. And SR right here is 4.5. So since I know a pair of corresponding sides that I know both values, I'm going to use that to be able to figure out the missing, the missing side on the orange figure. So here's how you do it. We're going to set up what's called a proportion. I am almost positive at some point in your math lives you've solved, solved a proportion. But if you haven't, it's not super hard. You'll be able to pick it up right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a fraction out of the two sides that I know. So my fraction is going to look like this. I'm going to take three from the smaller figure. And I'm just going to, I'm going to label it smaller. And I'm going to put that on top. And I'm going to put the 4.5 from the larger figure on the bottom. So a question that you might have straight away is, hey, why did you put the smaller one on top? Could I put the bigger one on top? And the answer to that is yes. I'm just going to up here on my scratch work. I'm going to show you what the, what the setup would be if I did that. So I'm going to put the 4.5 on the top, the larger, the three on the bottom. And I'm going to, it's, it won't make a difference either way to your answer. The key for you is consistency. So if I want to figure out now what BC is, the side that's labeled X, I have X and you told me the corresponding side on the bigger figure is three. So according to my original way that I put this, what am I going to put on top of this fraction? Yeah, I'm going to put X. X is on the smaller figure. I've got my smallers on top. So then I'm going to put the three from the larger figure on the bottom. So if your tendency would have been originally to put the larger figure on the top, the 4.5 over the three, that is totally fine. 
Okay, then all you're going to do is you're going to make an adjustment on the other side and you're going to put the larger value on the top over here as well. Okay, you got to be consistent. That's the only thing that you could possibly do wrong is if you swapped the sides. Once you have set up your, your fraction, the way you solve a propor proportion is you multiply along the diagonals. And what that means is this, I'm gonna multiply along this diagonal right here. So I have 4.5 times X. And then that's gonna equal, and I'm gonna multiply along this diagonal, three times three is nine. And again, just, just reviewing, because I just want to make sure we're all feeling nice and confident. If I need to get this X by itself now, what do I need to do to both sides of this? Yep. Divide both sides by the 4.5. That's great. That's well said. And when you put that into your calculator, you get X is 2. So the length of side BC is equal to 2. Pen stopped writing for a second. That's the same thing you would have gotten if you had set up the fractions this way, no different. So what I would like you to do, I'm gonna give you a minute or so for the B part. I would like you to set up the proportion and if you have time, solve it, but definitely set up the proportion you would use to find PQ. Right, so PQ is at the top of the larger figure. It's labeled Y. Its corresponding side on the other, on the other uh, pentagon is AB and it is labeled four. Okay, so that gives me everything I need to set this up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the, that relationship that I know. Again, I'm gonna do smaller on the top, larger on the bottom. If you did larger on the top, smaller on the bottom, then both your fractions should be reversed. We should all end up with the exact same thing. So my initial relationship is I have three on the smaller pentagon to 4.5 on the larger. Okay, those are my corresponding sides. So then now I've got four on the smaller pentagon to Y on the larger one, which is Y is what I'm looking for. And now once again, I'm going to cross multiply. I'm going to multiply along the diagonals. Three times Y is three Y. 4.5 times four, I believe that's 18, but correct me if I'm wrong, please. And then divide by three and I get Y is equal to six. So that missing side is equal to six. Any questions, comments, concerns? Well, then we're gonna flip the page. I got another problem for you because I want you to have as much fun as possible. Yes? Can you do it by uh, dividing the yeah, so you're doing essentially the same thing. And in this problem, that works fine. So the question, in case you didn't hear it, is can I, uh, can I just divide 4.5 by 3 and use that as a multiplier? Uh, and it, that works fine in this problem because it turns out to be a nice round answer, right? It turns out to be 1.5. And so it's doable. So what you've done is you've, you've, you've actually created the uh, constant of multiplication. If this was a, uh, if you set this up as a direct proportion, we talk, I don't know if you took intermediate algebra at Polk State, but we talk about that at the very end. Uh, so it'll always work, but it, it can get messy if the numbers don't divide in evenly. So that's why I set this up as a proportion uh, in this particular instance. Okay, great question.
Love it. All right, so on the next page, I'm gonna give you a couple minutes. I've got a couple quadrilaterals here. They are similar. And so I would like you to please find X and find Y. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and set up find X. If you have any questions, if you did something different, you want to know why it did or did not work, let me know. So once again, the proportion is set up because I know 18 on the small figure and I know 22.5, those are corresponding sides. So to find X, I'm going to set that up 18 in the top, 22.5 in the bottom. And so now to figure out X, X is down here on the bottom. And so it corresponds with 16. So I have my fractions set up with the smaller figure on top and the larger figure on the bottom. So there's my proportion. So now I'm gonna go ahead and solve it. The 18 times X is 18 X. The 22.5 times 16, does anyone have 22.5 times 16? 360? And then when I divide both sides by 18, it looks like that's gonna turn out to be X is 20. Okay, so my value of X is 20. Anybody get something different? Anything we need to talk about there? Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing for Y. I'm gonna start off with the same uh, proportion, 18 over 22.5. This time Y is the angled side at the top. It's again, we don't know it, it's on the larger one. 17 is on the smaller one. So I have 17 over Y. So once again, I've got 18 times Y and then 22.5 times 17 is, looks like it's gonna be 382.5. And when I divide that by 18, what does that turn out to be? Twenty one point twenty five. Thank you very much. Appreciate you all being my calculator, saving me all sorts of energy. All right, almost done. You guys are doing great. If you got any questions, please feel free to ask it. We're hitting toward, heading toward the finish line. So similar figures work just like that. There's a special instance in similarity where instead of the sides being in proportion, the sides are equal. So two similar figures, Remember, similar figures mean the angles are the same and the sides are in proportion. But this time I have similar figures that have equal sides. Okay. So when it's just a one-to-one -one relationship because everything's equal, what these are called is congruent figures. Okay. 
So after you've filled in the blank congruent figures, exercise five presents you with two triangles that are congruent. Okay, they, they have the same angles, they have the same sides. And I would like you to find the three missing values for, for that problem, please. All right, so I've got triangle A and then B and then C, and then I've got triangle A apostrophe, B apostrophe, C apostrophe. And so we're asked to first find B with the apostrophe, C with the apostrophe. So this short side right here. So what are you gonna propose to me? If I just highlight this pink so we know what we're talking about, what are you gonna propose to me is the value of that side? Yeah, B apostrophe C apostrophe is the corresponding side to BC, which we already know. And since those two figures are congruent, uh, that means that this side's gonna be 18. Okay, same sort of thing with AB. AB is this longer side over here, goes from A to B. And so since these are congruent figures, what would you tell me is the value of A to B? Yep, it's going to be the same thing as A apostrophe to B apostrophe. It's going to be 33. Fantastic. And then one more time, I want to know what the measure of angle A with the apostrophe is. So angle A with the apostrophe is, is this one right here. It's the, the, the slim little angle, the smallest one of the, of the bunch. And so since these figures are congruent, meaning all sides, all angles are the same, what are you going to tell me is the measure of angle A apostrophe? 31 degrees. Perfect. Great job. All right. So last little bit. This last little bit is actually uh, the only reason I've included it. It's in this section. So there's a couple homework practice problems about this vocabulary, but we'll use this more when we get to the uh, next unit, when we come back next Wednesday and we, we start with section 8.3. Uh, then we'll begin to talk a little bit more about quadrilaterals and uh, four-sided figures and, and other, other, other plane, plane figures and finding areas and, and uh, perimeters and things like that. But for now, uh, here's what here's what you need to know. Each of these is a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral has four sides, as we talked about earlier. And so these quadrilaterals are all classified like this. This first one has two sides that are parallel. So notice on the top and the bottom, those sides stay the same di distance apart. The left and the right ones, they are not. They are angled in, in a strange way. When you have something where only one pair of sides is parallel, that's called a trapezoid. So that is opposed to something that has both sides are parallel. So notice on this one right here, the top and the bottom are parallel. And then also the left and the right are parallel. So a nice thing that happens here is the top and the bottom are equal sides and the left and the right are equal sides on this. So when you have something where the both sets of opposing sides are parallel, this is called a parallelogram. Parallelogram. 
Now, the remaining figures are all variations of the par parallelogram. I'm actually going to go down first to, to the one right below. So all of the rest of the figures are special kinds of parallelograms. So you really only have two figures on this sheet. You've got a trapezoid, and you've got a parallelogram and some variations. So if I go down here, Okay, this is a parallelogram. Notice this is a parallelogram. Both sets of sides are parallel, top and bottom and left and right, but then all angles are right angles. So if you have a parallelogram that all the angles are right angles, this is called a rectangle. Similarly, now I'm going to go to the right. Instead of making all the angles right angles, what I'm going to do when I go this way is I'm going to take a parallelogram and I'm just going to make all the sides equal. I'm not touching the angles. I'm making the sides equal. So when you do that, a, the, a kind of parallelogram that has all sides equal is called a trapezoid. So notice, I've started off with a parallelogram. All that is is opposite sides are parallel. Going downward, I then said, okay, I'm going to take that parallelogram and I'm going to make all the angles right angles. I'm straightening it out. It became a rectangle. Going to the right, I took my parallelogram and just said, okay, instead of doing anything to the angle, I'm going to make all the sides the same. It becomes a trapezoid. Then when you do both of those things, so when you make all the sides equal and when you make all the angles right angles, you end up with a square. All of those are different versions of a parallelogram. 